and they do need our need. So if there's ever an issue, and then the owner herself goes through and asks questions and gives cards. I was talking to her yesterday, and she said, I've only had one person ever call me back when I give them a card. So this is me. Please call me if you have any issues. So they're very attentive, I think, to the needs of the staff. And again, Walter and I walk through regularly and ask the questions as well. So while I guess in the beginning there could have been some issues, and that does happen, like we had some issues before with other things, I think we, they're very quick to respond, very quick to, to take care well, of them. That's that's what you're hearing. That's not what I'm hearing as a board member. And I don't know if people don't want to talk to you and tell you they don't want their name out there, they don't want their office to be the one that's complaining, but they're not doing what they should be. They're not dusting windowsills, they're not cleaning off surfaces, they're barely emptying the trash, and they're not doing it every day. And then there have been things that you know, are missing, like I said, drinks from a refrigerator. You so give us an option, an yeah. opportunity to correct these issues. Maybe what we need to do is set tighter parameters of what they're supposed to do on a daily basis. And do we have a printout of what is supposed to be cleaned? Are they vacuuming? Are they mopping floors? I mean, what are they doing every night? We can have Maybe we need that. to reevaluate that because it's not getting done. It might so, be getting done in your office because you're who they answer to, well, but it's not getting done in everyone else's. So, you know, Miss Kerkus, do you know? I without outing who's ever calling you. No, I'm not revealing an office department or a name. So, no, I understand, so maybe, but is there a building? Maybe what we need to do, to Ms. Karakas' point, is establish, if, if you can meet with the company, mm -hmm. establish criteria that can be validated to ensure that it's done. That would that would help eliminate the concerns there and make sure that we're getting good service. And maybe we purpose. could send something to each department, and if Certainly. they notice something's not being done, let's say HR said, hey, you know, we spilled something and it wasn't vacuumed up. Mm -hmm. And there's a checklist that they can say this wasn't done and leave it for that night. Please do it. Okay. I mean, some way for accountability so that what we're paying this company to do, they're doing it. Fair. And also so our staff is not dealing with this issue. So so I heard two things, Mr. Faso. A way to, to validate what it is yeah. they're doing and then a way to report it if it's not being done. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I appreciate that. I know we've talked about it before you know it. I like the idea about reporting that what, something that wasn't done. Because mm -hmm. that way they can do it immediately and they Maybe, can fix you know, it the next day. A checklist in every office mm -hmm. that should have been done and it wasn't or something. Yeah, and that's anybody can fill that out. Then it's not just. So I, I, you know, I will say that one of the challenges is when a custodian is missing at the school level, mm. right? Because then you go from four to three in some cases at an elementary school, that's that's a big that's a big lift and a big challenge. And so uh, you know, there are times where the cleaning is reduced because the number of people are reduced at the school level. The benefit of a company is there shouldn't be a reduction in the number of people uh, involved because they have other sources of people that they can bring in. As long as they do the job. Okay, that brings us to 16, Motor Oil Transmission Fluid and Automotive, automotive Fluids Countywide Bid to H.R. Lewis Petroleum. Number 17 is the change order for the LED lighting at uh, Ridgeview Elementary School parking lot. Number 18 is the um, schematic preliminary final for S. Brian Jennings School Roof Replacement for buildings 1, 2, and 3. Number 19 is change order for the lighting at Oakleaf Junior High. Twenty is the normal pre-qualification of contractors. Wow, that was quick. Now on to discussion. The discussion item. First one is to approve the nominations for the Citizen Oversight Committee. I, I was looking at that. Do you think that should read approve the appointment of Citizens Oversight Committee? I mean, we're not nominating anyone, we're appointing them. Mm -hmm. We're not voting, we're just sure. appointing who we choose to appoint. Mr. Bickner? 
Sorry. <laughs> I was asking for D1. I thought it should be labeled no, approve no, the appointment no, of the uh, for the Citizens Oversight Committee since we're not nominating anyone, we're just appointing them. I think that would work, yes. It just seemed like um, it was worded correctly to make that. Thank have you. we gotten sufficient numbers that that can be done? Yes. Every year? person has had enough in their folders that they would be able to pick a uh, three year, a two year, and a backup. All right. Good. Thank you. And what is what is the deadline for that to be to you? So, in probably in speaking with Mr. Bickner, he said that we would need the backup 48 hours in advance. But if we would have it by Friday, what we would do is just craft the attachment and then put it as backup. That would have everybody listed. Um, and that was something I know a couple of you had asked me questions, and I was like, "Ooh, I'm not sure about this. We could part to discuss." Um, like, do we contact the people? You guys want to contact this week? Do you want to make the decision? So, and that would be something, Mr. Bickner, that I would just assume you guys would call and be like, hey, thank you for your application. I'm interested in having you as a three-year or a two-year or the backup. Is that something that you guys just do first? And then by Friday, give me a list to make sure the person was still wanting to be involved. <coughs> the, um, the agenda goes live on Thursday. Am I right? Yes. So okay. she's saying by Friday, if it's possible to get it done by Thursday, then we don't have to even think about the 48-hour deadline. It just gets done when everything is posted as it normally would. The dead, the drop deadline would be Tuesday at four, but it would be better if we could do it by Thursday. That's why I was asking if everybody got sufficient numbers because a week ago there were not sufficient numbers in at least one district to make that work. Mm -hmm. So. Yep, everybody's good. Now, Mr. Prosky, how many are you picking, and did you get any? One and one alternate. So did you get? Uh, I have one uh, individual, and I am going to choose somebody from from the remaining folks that have been chosen. Yeah. Very good. I have a question. So you're to contact the person. Uh, is that what we're saying? And how about the ones that are? That are not, we should also contact them. And we had, I had one in my folder that we decided was not eligible Correct. because they were an employee. Correct. So, should I also contact that person? Is my question. Um, I would assume so. Okay, so yeah, I should contact them. them all and, and say thank you for your time. But yes, you, unfortunately, and we can always keep their application on file in the yeah, folder or something. If you become not an employee, okay. Yeah, I just want to make sure. like a form letter for that, I'm happy to create one. It's no big deal. But. Otherwise, you can get another phone. I mean, yeah, yeah. I'll just call. Yeah, I just yeah. waited until Friday. I mean, I wanted to make sure I had them all before I called. Yes. Thanks. Okay, are we good? Yep. So that brings so us to deep. We need to get it to you by Thursday with the final. If we want it, yes. Got it. On the okay. Just Designating sure. that would be best. three year, two year. Correct. Call. Correct. Making. So D2 is special action, there's none at this point, and D3 is approve the uniform pricing and uniform definition for summer enrichment programs offered by outside organizations. This is something that has come up recently, and it's come up because in last year we did not have summer programs uh, in person. And so what's happened is uh, the board, through their use of facilities and board policy, never addressed the issue of what if it's a summer enrichment program. So quite a few people worked on, on this, um, and we kind of came up with a pricing sheet that you should see uh, on the other page of that, because what would happen is we would be winding up ch charging an organization so much that they wouldn't be able to operate because of the daily rate that's established in the original document. <coughs> so if you take a look, it, it defines what an enrichment program is, okay, at the top of the sheet, and gives examples like robotics and STEM programs, writing, poetry, journalism, reading, language, uh, music and movement, etc. So we're looking at enrichment programs. Uh, the YMCA would be a, an example of that, okay? And then you can see that the the cost would be $150 per day for those that have between 100 and, uh, and 40, 1 to 40, uh, 200 for 41 through 70, 71 through 100 would be 250, and uh, more than 
more than 100 would be $300 per day. So this is more than the board, I think when the board, and I certainly don't want to, to kind of espouse as to what the board was thinking, but I think the board looked at our original pricing and felt like it was not enough. So we created additional pricing. Um, and that was based off of, I think we looked at five different school districts, mm -hmm. and there was a chart that we looked at and we said, okay, this is fair, and this is rational, this is reasonable. And then what's happened is these programs that are daily programs for enrichment for students, when you add up the per day, well, that, that adds up, you know, um, to quite a bit of money that would not make it cost effective for them. There's the issue of the board wanting to establish a fair price, but also we don't want to price organizations and parents out of providing the service for students, right? Mm -hmm. So in theory, if you increase the price where it was exorbitant and a group uh, such as the Y couldn't come in, where the price was so high, what they would do is they would just transfer the price to our parents. Mm -hmm. So I feel like there's probably like a sweet spot uh, in that process, and uh, uh, we've talked to organizations, we kind of feel like, and um, I thank Dr. Gucko and her group and Chris, we feel like this is the sweet spot, mm -hmm. so to speak, which is why we're proposing these particular rates uh, relative to summer enrichment programs. Anything you want to add, Doc? Uh, no, you um, covered it very well, thank you. <laughs> Can I ask a quick question? Yes, ma'am. So there are teachers mm -hmm. who sponsor different camps as well, right. and and this does not include them. So no, even if is even an if a teacher, audience. let's say an elementary teacher, uh -huh. was using a high school to do a drama camp or something of that nature, mm -hmm. that's not there's no additional expense to the teachers or to anyone, yeah. as long as it's school related. Yeah. Correct. Yes. Correct. It's but it doesn't have to be their school. Is where I'm coming from. Right. I mean, so, are, so employees, by your rule, cannot rent facilities. Mm -hmm. It has to be school related yes. in order for all of that to be waived. They can't be personally no. meaning. It yeah. would be school yeah. related. Right. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. And I'm pretty. Yeah. That's what I'm. I'm sort of. There have been a number of camps that teachers have offered as specialty sorts of things. Mm -hmm. And you say school related, but if it was, if the, and most of them that I was trying to come up with were on that list. So Oakley High School has two basketball camps that they're charging parents. It's a daily camp. Yes. That is an internal camp. Got it. It yeah. is being covered. Yep. They are carrying extra insurance though yes. because they're having kids that are not high school students mm -hmm. come onto the campus. Yes. That is all. That's all. It's all that. So I would say, I would say this I would too. I think. Right. I think the feeling of the board was, and certainly don't want to paraphrase for what the board mm -hmm. felt like we should have um, more eyes on on this particular issue. I will tell you that that Chris has more than two eyes. <laughs> She's verging on eight. When it comes to when it comes to watching your facilities, so I just wanted to provide you with confidence uh, in that in that issue. Mm -hmm. I, I'm glad to see this coming because there was one particular company that was brought to our attention that's running a business mm -hmm. out of our, you know, a summer business out of our schools, and yes. you know. Mm -hmm. Hello. Yeah. Yes. So, yes. You know. Now, Mr. Mr. Beckner, when an individual, what's the process for an individual company such as the YMCA, for example? Um, when that when the group met that, that put this together, um, there were about seven of us, and we looked at a list, and there are, were about thirty different organizations, boys and girls clubs. The YMCA, Bright Minds, Bricks for Kids, uh, a couple of karate classes in schools, and all of them wanted to have their their summer organization, their summer enrichment program. And so when we defined that, it was trying to figure out how to put a focus on it so that it's not babysitting. Um, as it stands right now, the only two that have shown any real interest, as I understand, and correct me if I'm wrong, Ms. Isaiah, is 
uh, the YMCA and Bright Minds. The YMCA has looked at this fee schedule and has basically, I think, brought into it. I think Bright Minds has looked at it and I think they're shying away. Um, as far as Bricks for Kids or any of the others, all of them would need to simply approach uh, Ms. Isaias through That's business cool. fairs and that would start the ball rolling. As it stands right now, the only two contracts that I'm looking at creating um, would be for the YMCA and if Bricks for Kids buys in, Bricks for Kids. Mm -hmm. no, yeah, not Bricks for Kids, Bright Minds, I'm sorry. Um, Bricks for Kids, we haven't, I haven't heard anything about. Um, I guess we'll have to see. But that's how it would go, would be to go to Miss Isaiah and Business Affairs and we look at it. They have to be apprised, they have to understand the, the parameters and the requirements and we we'll go from there. And this doesn't affect the after school program with the YMCA at all. No. I and mean, that benefits our district. Can I make a correction? Yeah. Um, as far as uh, the start of it, um, the, the companies will go directly to the school and coordinate through there, and from there, they'll come through our office. I think when the committee met, in, in all fairness, the yeah. buy in from the people that work at the yeah. school is really needed. It's real, uh, you know, at the district level, it's not the same as when right. individuals that are there on a daily basis right. are, are dealing with the company, so it makes sense. Well, we've had a lot of complaints. I mean, we've said it on the board mm -hmm. floor about bright minds yes. and, and how the condition they leave the teacher's right. classroom and they use the teacher's supplies, even though it's supposed to be locked doors, mm -hmm. somehow or another it's still out and used. And so, um, and, and then you have good. the pricing issue. Now there's a uniform pricing yeah. for, for all organizations. And, and there's also uniform oversight so that you have more people on the ground there that are school oriented and custodians think somebody has to open the place, somebody yeah. has to close the place, somebody has to be there. Yeah. So you've got more that's here because I know that I've gotten at least one call from Thunderbolt and we got a letter I think from Argyle, but I could be wrong, Argyle yeah. Elementary because they're trashing the, the portables and leaving them trashed. Yeah. And so that's part of it. You're going to be there. You're going to have to pay for the cleanup. You're going to have to pay for the maintenance. You're going to have to, to ante up. And uh, that's a good thing from the perspective of the schools, and it's just responsible citizenship from the perspective of the corporations. If they can't do it, we're sorry. Have a nice day. Go somewhere else. And, and what is the um, cancellation policy? You know, like the way Bright Minds was using our schools and leaving them in that condition. I felt like we should have severed that. Contract is there anything in here that says there's abuse or neglect? That's not part of this. This is a fee structure and a definition. The contracts themselves will be put together using uh, an independent contractor agreement and whatever else we can get from the individual organizations. There will be something in there on termination. Okay. There always is in anything that I produce. <coughs> so it will be there. It's just a matter of Exactly what and, when. And, and it's important to remember too that they have insurance and if they do damage something we can always make a claim mm -hmm. so I mean I, I realize some schools didn't realize that but mm -hmm. all they had to do is submit that what their damages are and we would make a claim against their insurance well and let's educate our principals on Absolutely. their rights mm -hmm. because this is their school right? Absolutely. so if it's abused in any way let's hold that company whether company it is accountable for it. And, and I think that was the intent of having the independent contract go to the school levels, so but they are more involved. Did they bring a school denial letter to the principal? They did. Yeah. 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 I've got Thunderbolt. They don't want their something. school to be the buyer. So they yeah. Because they should have that right. They do. Is every school used during the summer, do you think? Not by outside organizations. But the inside, obviously. It, it is very, they are very actively doing camps and teachers. So many people think that the schools are just empty during yeah, the summer. Nobody does anything during the summer. And that's oh, that is a great segue to my <laughs> next, <laughs> three, my right, next item. Races. There's, there's no, an please. item that's not on the agenda, but will be shortly. And it's, it's an expansion of summer programs uh -huh. for our students. One of the things that uh, that certainly people are concerned about is COVID slide or academic yes. regression of students. And so uh, we are going to be proud to offer additional, particularly literacy, programs for our students. Uh, we've met uh, previously and are going to meet again by Thursday. There will be an agenda item.
that kind of um, expands upon the summer program manual and calendar that you've already approved. So if you recall, was it last month or the month before, it was the summer program calendar was that thick of all the programs across there. We're going to expand our offerings to students, particularly just to younger students for literacy and other targeted areas of, uh, of academic concern. So you'll see uh, an agenda item for um, revision of the summer program manual. Okay, and that and will include a uh, change page. So you'll know the difference between the original one that you've already approved and the additional programs that are going to be added. So look for that in the, in the very near future. So Madam Chair, at this, at this point, I, I'd like to um, discuss uh, previous email related to the addition of uh, Ms. Lake to the board agenda. Okay. You know, in, in this issue, those that don't know me, I, I always consider myself to be a good collaborator with people. And I always try to work it out with every single person and every single board member. So, um, so when, when something happened where I believe that there could be um, issues that prevent us from completing our work the way that we should, which is really about, about students, I believe it's proper to bring it forward in the open to discuss it, and that's why I'm, I'm bringing this topic up. I'm not bringing the topic up to, um, to cause any ill feelings or anything like that. I'm simply bringing it up because it's a, a matter of importance to a board member and, and to the rest of us. So I think it's fair to bring the issue forward for discussion at this point. Um, there's little doubt, uh, even the board attorney has weighed in on what the policy says relative to this particular issue. Uh, I didn't know if anybody would like to speak, speak well, to the issue. A, you know, I just, uh, you know, I've never had a problem uh, adding an item to the agenda. And um, it seems for some reason this is a, was an issue, and I'm not sure why it would be or who had a concern about it. Um, I'm certainly willing to address anybody's concern. Um, I know Ms. Foles said that you know, she could have the three minutes of public comment. However, you know, I wasn't sure how long she might take. She might need more than three minutes. So, and I feel like she's an elected official, and this was a 5 0 vote um, by the city council. Uh, because, of course, the schools of Keystone are in the city limits. And so, obviously, they have a growing concern about that. And especially now that we know there's going to be some growth, some uh, property has been sold, and some new homes, um, it becomes even a, a bigger concern because um, if those homes, when those comes, homes come on board, would that then re mean a rezoning? Which none of us like to, to hear that, but it could because that property is all within the city limits. Uh, so anyway, um, but anyway, the, the city council, um, and that was all theirs. They had asked me to do a presentation, but they decided to do a resolution. So uh, she wanted to come and present the resolution and talk about, you know, maybe just con some concerns that they have. So. And if one of the things that I was looking at originally when you had asked to have Mayor Lake put on the agenda, it was like, no, that's, that's more a presentation from the audience, which is under public comments. And obviously, if she were to come to the podium, she would be introduced as the mayor of Keystone Heights. That's just, that's just courtesy. Um, if it takes more than three minutes, I, don't, I mean, we had intentionally changed our policy to get away from the 10-minute presentations by citizens. And no matter what the citizen. And so with, excuse me, with that, I was thinking, you know, as the chair, I can let that, I mean, sure, the three-minute light will be on, but I can say, please go on. You know, I mean, it's not something that has to be cut off and, okay, you're done, you have to get out of the way. Well, and we do that with citizens. We do that with citizens. When they're passionate about something, we allow them. Now, if it gets to be... 10 or 15 minutes, I'll assure you, I will cut her off. <laughs> I don't think she but, does. Yeah, yeah, right, <laughs> exactly. But if it's, you know, I, I've seen the, I've seen the, um, it, it shouldn't, I mean, if she's going to read the proclamation, it and, shouldn't and, take and I know forever. To, and I think she wants to talk about how it came about as well. So, so uh, and that's, I mean, it's just basically reading through it and, and 
Yeah, I'm thinking five minutes. I mean, it may, but you know. But the bottom line is, I just felt like she, you know, warranted the spot on the agenda as a presentation. I mean, I did the art guild that was put on without a problem. Well, that, and which, that, and it free, I, I wasn't. I don't believe I was chairman then. But that was a certificate from you personally as well. Yeah. And that I was sitting back thinking, wait a minute, we're bored. You know, do we give a certificate with all of our names on it instead of just one name? And I, I that was something. I think that I put it, it from the school board though. I didn't. Okay, I, mean, I just don't know. But anyway, that <laughs> that's um, that was a different chairman, and I, I'm and I'm not saying. I guess my concern is. Once we allow something like that, we're opening up the floodgates. And I oh, we've already just, allowed uh, presentations to go on. The one. Well, the I mean, I'm sure there have been others. I, I recognize Felicia Hampshire as the mayor of Green Cove Springs when she received an award from the state. She was recognized at our school board. The chair, we put, I put it on under my name. Uh, Betsy Condon recognized Rob Bradley as a senator. You know, put it on under her name. It, it's like past practice is we've done this. And, and I've been on the board almost 11 years. Ashley, you're seven. I don't think we've ever had anything denied. I had one once mm -hmm. with Mr. Van Zant, and the chairman said, no, a board member has the right to put an item on and added it at that time. But I think a bigger issue here is that Mayor Lake is an elected official, mm -hmm. and when we took our 10-minute presentation off, I think you all remember, the conversation was, if a community member wants to be on our agenda, all they have to do is reach out to one of the board members, and we'll put it on for them under our name. Now, that's not written in policy, but it is what we all said. But if you go back and look at that video, you'll see that. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what's happening here, but I think if you take it one step further, Mayor Lake wants to be on our agenda. To them, their city council took a vote. This is a priority to them, and they're asking mm -hmm. to be placed on our agenda on, and have it in writing, presentation, proclamation, X, Y, Z, to Mayor Lake, Keystone Heights City Council. You know, and I think she's due that respect. It's not a vote that we have to take. We don't have to give any kind of consensus. They're letting us know what their community is concerned about. And I think it was very disrespectful disrespectful for us, and I'm going to say all of us, because we're a board, mm -hmm. to, to deny this. And I, I kind of feel we should. It hasn't been denied yet. But let me go one step It hasn't further. been denied yet. It was discussed. I That's think where we're at. what's even more insulting is that a board member is asking to place an item on. So I read Ms. Bullock's email. First she said, please add this as a presentation. Mm -hmm. Then she said, please place this under my name as my item. And I, I realize our policy has the word action there. Mr. Vicker pointed it out, which gives the, the policy says an action item. But when we wrote that policy, our intent was not to say only an action item. And we actually had great conversation that no board member's item can be removed without the permission of that board member. And that covered the whole entire agenda. The word action wasn't even brought to our attention that we were only able to put an action item on. And if you go back and re-watch that workshop, you will see that was never discussed that we can only put an action item on that agenda. So I kind of feel like this was such a small issue to create all this drama. And I hope that you will consider allowing Ms. Uh, Mayor Lake to be on the agenda. I miss the drama. Uh, yeah, I'm like, I, I don't know where the drama <laughs> well, is right now. Because all, I thought, all I thought was, I uh, saw Mr. Bickner's yeah. email, and I thought, well, we're coming up to a workshop. Let's discuss it. I, I, I See, but we shouldn't have gotten to this point where it has to be discussed. And even Mr. Brodsky <laughs> said to me, you know, he felt that, we had a conversation. He said, I don't know what's going on. I think every board member should be able to put an item on the agenda. So Mr. Brosky is in agreement with me on that. So here we are with, you know, an, another elected official in the community requesting to be on our agenda to speak to us, which, you know, I just feel that that was insulting. So I hope that, you know, we can get past this. 
Well, me too, and that's the reason why I brought this up. If there's anything that I, I have, I know you want to work together. Watch, I and watch that. everybody working on the same yeah. on the same side. Yes. A couple yes. things that I would point out: one, um, you know, the, the policy itself kind of dictates how we should how we should go. And so our policy, we should our actions should reflect our policy, which is why uh, we have policy to begin with. I, I'd also call the attention of the board that um, you know you learn things as you go and I've certainly learned uh, certain things that I've done and um, one of the things that I had learned from FADS and other organizations is that we are one of the very few districts in the entire state, 67 districts, that have that as a rule and in fact uh, in a training that, that we had they cited Clay County as an example I wouldn't say it was presented in a, um, in a negative light, but it wasn't presented in a positive light. And what FADS was trying to point out is that when, when the, the agenda, when people are putting on the agenda and everybody has access to do that, I know you might think it's the spirit of, it puts everybody in a weird position, and that was their argument. And so I can certainly share the information with the board and, and the citing of it. And of course, they don't have any control over what we do in Clay County. And if that's the decision of the board, that's the decision of the board. You know, it's not for me to say. But I'm just merely pointing out that, that I realize you guys had a workshop and that you created it. Obviously, it is. Much discussion went into it, and I wasn't a part of it. So it's not fair for me. I'm only merely pointing out additional information that was given to me relative to this issue. So I don't know if the other two board members want to weigh in. Well, before they do, I have another question. I wasn't that. Ms. Spola, why don't you want it on the agenda? I didn't say I didn't want it on. Your I, response was to Ms. Lee. To Ms. Lee. I, I've been looking at the agenda, former ag previous agendas that I've overseen. Mm -hmm. And in each of these, it's under recognitions and awards. Mm -hmm. And it's provided by somebody who is a member of the Clay County School District community. The second email that came out, I did not respond to because you had responded immediately. And Mr. Bickner sort of cut it all off and said, time out, we're getting into sunshine now. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't respond okay. because I didn't think it was appropriate. I, he basically said, don't. So I didn't. And it was in the email that he said don't. The bottom line is that under each of these recognitions and awards, it comes up from a school district employee or a school board member. So I, I didn't feel confident. I didn't feel comfortable saying, oh, okay, we're going to have Mayor Lake come and speak to us and just say recognition by Mayor Lake. It really comes from someone in the school district. The second way of doing this, recognition of Keystone Heights Mayor Lake. And it would say, it would say uh, presented by, and in this case it said, um, like Brenda Troutman or Michaela Buchanan or Tina Bullock, school board member. I mean, it's recognizing a particular thing. So it could, that's where I was coming from, Ms. Kirkus. So I was that saying, where you put it? I was, no, I would like to hear from our other board members as well. <coughs> but at this point, I, I'm sort of taking offense to the fact that you're saying this is drama and it's becoming drama. But, but you're creating it's, that. Excuse me. You're I'm not asking creating that. Now. I'm asking Mr. Bickner for an opinion. And at this point, Mr. Bickner, when it's, I understand where you were saying that if it's under presentations from the audience and we specify a particular person, that that is not, that's opening up the can of worms again for the 10 minutes. Well, and not. that's where I was coming from. I did not want to open up, if I allow Ms. Mayor Lake to say something, then she's still a citizen of the community. This is still our board meeting. If I were to allow Mayor Lake to say something, then I would have to allow anybody else. I mean, you're opening up those floodgates, is what we had talked about. That's my opinion. Excuse me. Excuse me. In the situ I'm still asking him a question, please. In the situation where someone were to place this 
under recognitions and awards, which is the very first part of our meeting. We have the recognition of all of the state athletes. We have the recognition, what was the other thing up there? Math. math. The math team members. Following that, if we had a recognition of Mayor Lake from Keystone Heights, doesn't presented fit. by Tina Bullock. Doesn't fit. When you're talking about resignations for everything that you've done in the recognitions and awards, you're talking about recognizing an accomplishment of an individual or a group. Recognizing her for being the mayor so that she can present a resolution does not fit in that. It's, it's simply not there. And it's wrong. Um, I don't know how you can stretch the idea of recognizing accomplishments to meet that. So it doesn't fit there. But are we recognizing a position is where I'm coming from. We're recognizing the mayor. Now we're not, we're not, it's, I guess I'm looking at recognition, not necessarily as an award per se, but the fact that in this situation, Ms. Bullock and Mayor Lake have asked that they come to the school board. It's a recognition of their, of her status as mayor. I think you're really having to bend and stretch and, trying. and twist it beyond what it has been historically. And beyond what the, you know, nobody asked me to look at a dictionary definition or a statutory definition for recognition and awards, but I can promise you that it doesn't include what you're saying. Um, I think that you, when you say we're going to recognize her so that she can present something, that's what the whole idea is of public recognition. We recognize you to present a question or an idea or a thought. Recognitions and awards is something entirely different. It is recognizing the individual or group accomplishments of a person or group of people so that they can receive uh, laudatory comments, congratulations, and applause. Whatever. So I don't, I don't think that works in any way in that. Where else would this fit on the agenda then? Under, under public comments. That's where, that's where I And it says my presentation from the audience public comments. And in all fairness to Ms. Caracas, what somebody's done in the past during the four years that I was gone, I don't tell people what to do. I didn't make a ruling as I've been accused of. I simply defined what I saw a board policy to say with the plain, simple language defined by the dictionary and by statute and by Robert's rules as to exactly what it encountered. And so I don't see how you can fit what you're trying to do anywhere except under public comment. Now, does that mean I'm saying you can't do it? The rule says, where do I put it? The superintendent shall establish the agenda for school board meetings and workshops in collaboration with the board chair. Mm -hmm. Not Bruce Bickner, not board attorney. So, but I was asked what do I see as to where this fits in the agenda and can some damn school board member just say arbitrarily, I am just, some, my right as school board members to do this. It's not here. It's not in statute. It's nowhere that I can find that says you have an absolute right as a school board member to put something on the agenda because you want to. Now, in all fairness to everyone, there were massive changes in 2013. There were more massive changes in 2015. And there were some changes in 2018. And I went back and looked at all of those. And the problems that those 2013 and 2015 changes caused or created were pretty amazing. I mean, we had people who were demanding their right through a school board member to come up and give a 10-minute speech about how Christianity saw you as a school board member and how you were going to hell. Mm -hmm. Okay? I, I don't want to get back there, and I don't think any of you do either. But I can tell you this, that once you open a door, you cannot discriminate on viewpoint because that violates civil rights. And so the first time that, and don't tell me it won't happen or can't happen, because I can promise you it will. If it's happened or can happen, it's happened in these board meetings. The mayor of, I'm going to use Penny Farms, the mayor
mayor of Penny Farms and their small group of people decide through a resolution that they do not like invocations at the school board meetings and that it should be eliminated and reduced to nothing more than a pledge because it's violating the separation of church and state. Can that happen? Oh yeah. Now, what happens when that school board, when that mayor says, okay, I want to make this presentation, I want my name on the agenda, I want my resolution published, and I want to stand up and say this, and it's going to take 10 minutes. You can't stop that. What happens when somebody else decides that they have passed a resolution that we should uh, take a whole different stance on LGBTQ issues, whether we should take a whole different stance on religion, whether we should take a whole different stance on Black Lives Matter, whether we should take a whole different stance on any number of a hundred things that are going to offend about half of this community and be lauded by the other half. You can't stop the presentation. And that's all I'm saying. Now what you as a board want to do, well, certainly you're free to do it. But the answers come from the two of you, mm -hmm. not from the board as a whole. Mr. Bishop, sure. I have a question. And, and, and I'm going to point to one other statute that nails that down. 1.525 says if there's any change whatsoever to the board agenda after it's been published, he doesn't make the decision and the board doesn't make the decision. You do. Mm -hmm. That's telling you that the power of this agenda comes from the two of you and the ultimate authority to make changes after it's been published is with the board chair. And that's the long and the short of it. So... And that's all that I've said. And did I try to favor anybody? No. I am looking at the black and white that's on this piece of paper and defining, I went to great lengths to define the word simply because I don't want somebody to come back and say, well, collaboration doesn't mean that. Agenda doesn't mean that. All these things are, no. I wrote it down just exactly the way it, the way it was. And, and my, my opinions are my opinions. And I think that ultimately, if you allow it any place other than that, and you're going to, it's going to come back at you. Now, can you change board policy? It's been done in 13, 15, and 18. Can you do it again? Certainly. I can write words that mean anything with very, very strict guidance. All you have to do is tell me to do it. Question for you, Mr. Bechner. Um, why couldn't you go under presenters? So like when Orange Park Medical Center comes to present a check, we do it under presenters. Because every time we have a presenters. Well, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Whenever we have a presenter, and I looked at that, every time we have a presenter, it has something directly to do with somebody either giving something to the school board or the district, or presenting something that is an attaboy an mm -hmm. for the school district. Mm -hmm. And this doesn't give you one of those. It, it does, because she's making a presentation giving a resolution to the school board. Well, and that's your opinion, Ms. Bullock. I mean, I'm and, just saying that. And, and I'm happy that for is, you to present And that that's all I ask. And if that's what you choose to do as a board or as the, the two of these individuals who make the decision, I have, I don't have a dog in the fight. So one other question. Mrs. Bullock, uh, Mrs. Bullock, uh, Bullock sorry. You're very good about the three minutes with speakers. Mm -hmm. What happens when you allow Mayor Lake to go 10 minutes. Now, you've been very good about cutting people off, and mm -hmm. I don't mean in a nasty way, but, you know, getting them to up. presenters except for the last meeting. How, how's that going to happen? You know, how's that going to look now when you allow one person to go seven minutes or six minutes, whatever it may be, and the next person who comes up after them is talking and you have to cut them off? So, if I could, you know, it appears in listening to the board attorney and everyone else, you know, just to try to bring some closure to it, that, um, and I certainly understand the need to recognize Mayor Lake, and, and so uh, I, I would propose to compromise today that it be under public comment because that is the place where it should, should be, based on what I'm hearing here today. But there should be recognition mm -hmm. of, of Mayor Lake because she is the elected uh, individual for Keystone and presenting, presenting resolutions uh, is appropriate uh, and should be recognized. And so that would put us in compliance with board policy and at the same time still allow that to occur. And um, certainly, Mr. Victor, is it my understanding that you could 
have a question and answer at that time. In other words, uh, it would be appropriate for the board member to then make comment under public comment in addition to the comment from the mayor that would... Um, Extends her time. Mm -hmm. Exactly, and that mm -hmm. would uh, eliminate the, uh, the issue here and still bring status to the to the issue, and that's yeah. hey, that's the best I got, ladies. That's and this is that's all. That's all, all It's all covered in board policy to do okay. all of those things to make it work. Because at the at the end of all of this, I want us to work together as a team. I understand. I truly yes. understand both sides of the issue. I'm attempting to get into the middle of it and say, here we go. This is what we can do. Well, and that's why when we saw, I mean, in reading the actual agenda. It does say presentations from the audience. And Mayor Lake is making a presentation to us based on the City Council of Keystone Heights. And that's where I was coming from. It's not a recognition. I mean, it's not. I didn't say it as a recognition. No, no, no. no. Presenter. Correct. And that's why I was looking at presentations from the audience. And the initial response to your email, when you said, can't May Mayor Lake be on the agenda, I said, sure. She can be a presentation from the audience. And at that point, I truly thought, and she will get the recognition that she deserves because she is the mayor. I wasn't coming and you're going like this, and I'm sorry, but you're not reading my mind. And I just, and that was not intentional to be negative. And in fact, I encouraged Mayor Lake, I welcomed her and said, Mayor Lake, we look forward to having you at the meeting and gave her the date. And really, it wasn't a recognition. It's a presenting of the resolution uh, by and the city council, which was a 5-0 vote. Um, they mm -hmm. voted to uh, do the resolution, so, and I felt like they So as a, as a board member, you could certainly elevate this particular situation and comment it uh, appropriately, giving it to, its due recognition mm -hmm. at that time in front of everybody mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And I'd like it also to be in the minutes as well. And that she resolution. will be the first to present. It, uh, no matter who else is there, she will be the first to present. And whether she goes on the yellow card or not, I don't really care. We will call on her as the mayor of Keystone Heights. Our first presenter will be, and it won't be a public comment. It will be a presentation. And that's, what, and that's what I was asking for. Exactly. <clears throat> it just won't be on the agenda, which it's shameful that we're having this whole conversation about an agenda when for the last you know, 11 years on the board for me, um, this has never been an issue. It, it's, to me, this is just unbelievable well, that a board member would email the chairman and the chairman would deny it. Do either of you have any comments? Would you like me to change that? Do you have any feelings one way or the other? It could be you next time. No, I, after listening to Mr. Bickner, I don't know how you argue the decision here. It's I understand the frustration where you want to show respect where respect is due. Um, and, and it's really not that. It's really that they can present the resolution. It's not, you know, whether we're, I mean, you know, it wouldn't matter. I just feel like it's important. It's a community issue. It's a time when we're talking about educational facilities. We passed the sales tax. It's been a discussion. So, um, you know, their, their board determined to do that. And so I felt like... Uh, that uh, they needed to have a, a platform to do the resolution to the board so they, the board can do. see mm -hmm. what they have to say. And they do. They do have that platform. I think that the compromise here keeps us legal and allows Mayor Lake to say whatever she wants to say. And, and it was a very simple request she wanted to present, which is, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I don't know why we're, why all this is come about. I think we've resolved it, though. She is allowed to present, I think. Ms. Clark, any comment? Uh, ditto on a lot of what everybody has said, but, you know, listening to Mr. Bickner, you know, we're doing what we're allowed to do. But I, I guess I need to learn much more about it, what happened to even allow Clay to be different from all other counties. That's what I would like to learn and to know the ramifications, because we are different, of what can come up. So, um... So maybe we, maybe we should look at our policy. I have something else to add. If you were finished, Ms. Clark. Yeah. Um, I did speak to FSBA about this. We're not the only district that has this. There's many that do. There are a lot that don't, but you're right. Very but few. She, she said um, our 
Ours was very good. And it was positive about ours. And her comment was, rewrite your policy and take the word action out. And that the board members, she said, it's shameful that I was calling her about this because she said, I can't believe this is the discussion you're even having. And, and, Mr. and to Ms. Gilhouse's point, there's nothing legal about this because although Mr. Baker has told us the definition of everything, Mrs. Bola has the authority to go ahead and say, yes, we can put this under presenters and we can hear the mayor. We're not violating any law by doing that. No, not, that's not what I understood from Mr. Baker. What I understood was that if you allow it once, you have to allow it every time because it's about equity and it's about civil rights. Which is kind of what we've done in the past with Mrs. Condon bringing Senator Bradley and recognizing him, and I recognized Mayor Hampshire from Green Cup Springs. Recognition. And Recognition. we did all of this no different than recognizing the mayor of Houston. I can't see any difference between Senator Bradley, Mayor Hampshire, and Mayor Lake all being recognized, it's, except it's, this one's being stopped. I think what the you difference just, with, oh, I know with Senator Bradley, the recognition was about the millions of dollars that he got for the school district mm -hmm. through mm -hmm. state budget. Right. So that was the recognition. And, and this one's about the millions of dollars we're going to have to spend to build a school in Keystone that is desperately needed. That's the difference. But it's both this about our school district and money. This is a request where that was a recognition. Mm -hmm. It's, mm -hmm. well, you're right that I would say that was for the money, money and this right. is a request for the school district and Clay County Correct. to uphold what our Ed First Plan said. So, so. I could see, you know, where it's going and I appreciate that we had this discussion. And well, I'm very I mean, my, disappointed my attempt of bringing it to, to the fore was just so that everybody could have an opportunity to, uh, to say how they felt about it because at the end of all this, we still got to move forward, Absolutely. you know, with the business of the school district. And of course district. we will. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. So let's, I don't know how to segue, so I'm just going to go on to the next topic. Let's go to GPS. So there is, so there is no segue here, but GPS, we have, we have uh, Daryl Sweat kicking it off. Go ahead, Mr. Sweat. Um, all right. Uh, do you want, do you want me? Um, okay. don't, so it's, don't be nervous. No, I'm, I'm, not I'm, 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 I'm a little bit after listening to uh, I don't know. It is GPS. Uh, it's, it's a little crazy. Um, yeah. But it's time to renew. And so we're at that time again. I know it's kind of a hot subject. So uh, we've done some research and been working with uh, our procurement team on some things of uh, the possibility to renew with Synovia and some of the what they provide for us today and I wanted to share the value and show, share some of what we go through on a daily basis and how we use this, use this tool so um, I don't really who's uh you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, just <laughs> okay, so quick agenda. I know it's a short amount of time so I'm, I'm sure you'll have questions so um, I'm gonna go over just transportation what we've done over the last five years since we've had um, the GPS and a lot of the, the tablets and how we've changed and then uh, what we have currently and what we're moving to for the future and some cost savings, which I know is important. And then, like I said, it's quick, and then I'll um, answer any questions that you want, that you may have. So, go ahead. All right, so this is a highlight of um, basically, and, and there's a lot more, uh, but the big highlights that we've gone over the last few years, or last five years, really, um, when I came on board, I mean, it really meant a lot to provide the best tools possible uh, for the, the team out there just because it's, it's not easy. And uh, one of the biggest things was getting AC. So we have air conditioner on all 240 of our buses. Um, and then we've got video cameras on all of our buses now as well. So five cameras, and it supports us when we're constantly looking. It's resource intensive, but we couldn't do without it to support our team. Um, we get so many calls and so many things that happen. The video tells a story always. And um, so uh, we got, we have now 100 new buses that are in service um, under warranty, and uh, we've checked around. I've been told by quite a few that we have probably the newest fleet in all the Florida districts. So that's a lot to be proud of. And believe me, I mentioned it to our team that we've got, you know, they're not, you know, before they were getting off the bus and they were completely soaked in sweat. And it's just we're providing a, a more of a quality uh, the tools to do the job. So. Um, and the last bullet is GPS. I mean, we use it on a daily basis. It uh, helps keep our employees safe. It helps keep the students safe. Uh, it keeps us efficient and accountability on our routes. 
Um, and so it's part of our daily function to use this tool. And uh, so especially in the back office area where we're constantly making sure that we're doing the right things and that if somebody is under stress or has any kind of problem, we, we know exactly what their location is based on the GPS that we, we're getting on our big screen. So uh, not to mention improved communication. Um, we communicate better with the stakeholders. We, we train a lot better. We're constantly training. We have a nice training room now. Um, a lot of professional development and the morale and just the overall culture is different just because we're we have the stated we have a lot of good tools to do the job. So, um, and the reason I bring this up is GPS is a big part of it. Um, they do their, they sign on, they do their free trip, uh, they put their route information in there, and we've got them. You know, we're you know we're not watching them specifically, but if they have a problem, we know exactly where they're at and how to get to them. If it's a 911 call, it could be a fight, accident, anything. Everything happens in transportation. I think most of us know that. We can get to them really quick. We know exactly where they're at and how to support them. So, um, so that in itself is a huge value to us. Um, so you go ahead and do that. So presently, um, we have today uh, uh, 2G, 3G tablets on all 240 buses. And they work and they're fine, but the latency is, is heavy. Uh, there's not a lot of um, coverage out in Keystone, Green Cove area. We've got dead spots all over the, the county. Um, so... Um, and so uh, we've got a lot of the same things um, on the left hand side what we presently have we won't if, when, if we renew we won't carry navigation with it because the mapping and a lot of it is through the service that we have um, but navigation is just um, like an a la carte item for Synovia the, our GPS uh, vendor we're going to do something different with navigation somebody that truly does that's the main thing they do is the navigation with the maps and it'll mimic our route sheet so a new driver will get on a bus and be able to see exactly just like you do with your if you do it on your phone they'll see exactly where to turn and everything instead of it being a third party and trying to figure that out because it, it depends on the service if we're in certain areas the service is really good it stays up and you get further away or getting some dead spots the new driver is going all right update update I'm driving here you know and it, it's just so it's not it needs to be more efficient so we're going to do something different there um, but we are adding, we're getting rid of navigation, we're adding in, engine diagnostics so they come out where uh, proactively the shop managers will get alerted if there's a system failure, any kind of engine failure, anything they need to look at ahead of time that, you know, and that there's a lot of details on how we got to set it up as far as thresholds, but it's, um, it's pretty impressive so far from what we've seen. So to help us be more proactive on a bus having a problem and try to fix it before it actually breaks down. So. Um, so everything's basically the same, but uh, we got the except for the 4G tablets. They've got 4G tablets now for um, that they're they're going to come in if, if everything goes. They'll come replace all the other tablets. Uh, better. I mean, we've got 10 in a pilot phase right now in the test, and it's it's a world of difference all over the county. We're we're able to uh, we we can you know see service just about everywhere. Um, it's a little slower in some areas, but we are not dead. We don't have dead spots anymore. So. It helps us a lot with these 4G tablets. Um, comparative analysis on routes, that's always looked at where you're looking at the, um, the actual plan versus actual. So we know sometimes, believe it or not, our drivers will go kind of create their own route for families and they'll go pick them up at home and things like that. And it's good at that point, but when they get out, go out sick and we have a sub on there and they don't know that that's a stop, then all of a sudden we're in a mess. And so. It keeps us more efficient. Um, <clears throat> the core track and trace is student tracking. We're not using that feature. It just comes with the renewal. Um, I will do some piloting with it just to look at how they've improved, but nothing we're going to put into play going into next year. It's just a tool that we'll have on the backside and see how it's improved efficiencies because I do see it being a value, but I want to look at it a lot more and test it. Um, time and attendance, it's the GP, and it tells us right there in the report, in the calendar report, you know, come in and come out. So it gives us, a lot of times, you know, our employees want to get that report so they can make sure they're accurate. So it works on both ways. So um, the parent portal, uh, here comes the bus. We've moved up gradually every year. So we're about at 80% right now of families that have uh, the Here Comes the Bus app, which is a, a nice tool to have. It tells them right where the bus is at and how close they are before they have to send their students out. So, 
Mr. Swipe, could you tell us again about the time and attendance, the pay sheet efficiency? I know when we first got this um, GPS, the bus drivers were upset. Concerned. Um, it was like, you know, to the minute, and some of them were getting full pay. How are you <coughs> handling that? Well, we've, you know, I pick, pick my battles, basically. It's not, you know, we don't do it to go to the minute. We do it, and it, in fact, we do it um, to help the drivers in a way, because sometimes they're they're off 20 minutes on the other side of it. We're going, hey, um, GPS says you're coming back 20 minutes later. You need to get paid for that. So we make sure we adjust their normal day. Um, so it just, it helps us, uh, you know, if it's five, 10 minutes, anything around that, because you know you got traffic, and there's all, anything that could happen. Um, so we do give some flexibility, but if it's 30, 45 minutes to an hour that's off, it doesn't come up very often. It helps us help the drivers and the monitors come up with a good normal day. And so with this, when COVID came around, um, the normal days weren't updated as well as they should have been. And I kind of knew it was kind of my target to see how I wanted to go about that. Well, all of a sudden, we're going to pay drivers their normal day, and they were going, uh-oh, a normal day is right. They weren't getting paid as much as they were actually doing. And so... Um, so we're on top of it now. So we helped a lot of people. We went back to that GPS data of three or four weeks to get an average on their normal day, and it benefited them, to, and it saved them a lot because they had just hadn't updated it yet. So we got better measures in place to keep that updated now, but um, that's what it's used. I think the drivers like it, or our, our employees like it as much as we do because it helps them fill out the pay sheet right because they're going all over the place right now. So at the end of that week, they say, hey, can you pull my GPS data? I kind of want to see to make sure I put it on my pay sheet right. So it helps all of us. So, so. are they still filling out a pay sheet on a day-to-day basis? I hate to even say it. Yeah, because yeah. that was I one mean, of that, the things that... I mean, a lot of that, that paperwork, yeah. you know, they're, they're putting it together for a two-week span, but it's, mm -hmm. it's written in, and they have to turn it in, um, and it's a bunch of paper, and it, it's, it's, a, it's a goal. I, I want to get rid of it and do it more efficiently, but I know it's not as easy as just, all right, let's do this different. You know, it's a lot of, but they they won't really fill it out sometimes until, you know, they'll ask somebody or myself to, to print out two weeks for them. I don't mind at all because I can run a quick report and give it to them and they know exactly, you know, how they were in and out because it's a lot to keep up with. It is. Because they're covering for people and they're doing all kinds of stuff. So, I mean, they're really working hard. So. I have a question, Daryl, regarding the navigation. I know you said you're doing away with that, but... The question I had for one of the drivers about, you know, their day-to-day -day routes, you know, of course, obviously, they're, you know, unless they're a substitute or something for you, but what about field trips and things like that? <clears throat> Are they able to, um, like, they go to an unknown place, an area? Um, the, the new feature that we're looking at and we're testing one, they can put it in just like you do on your phone. They put the address in. Okay. You know, we when we set up a field trip and uh, we try to get the school or, to help with it, but... I mean, we've got the, the tablet on the bus, so it's okay. easy to just plug in the address and just go straight to it. Okay, so the drivers are able to do that, is my question, because that, that. that was a concern that a driver... Well, they're not able to do it today. They just maybe do it on their phone or the, between them and the, and the coach or somebody. They've got it, you know, they're pulling up directions on another device. On our Synovia device, they're not pulling it up there because you can't... I, they may be able to manually put it in, but they're not using that very often. They're just using it, but the product we're looking at, you can do that. Well, okay, so the new product will do that because that's that's been a question, I guess, that the drivers have had about when they go to an unknown area right. to, to be able to have the directions for that. So, yeah, and, okay. and the new product we're looking at is um, it'll have a lot of the locations already there, like the schools, but I know you're talking about something totally different. Yeah, but I mean, all the not. schools, all of our school addresses and things will be in there, so all they sure. have to do is, you know, maybe put a three character in there and they'll be able to pull those up too. So. Okay. Any other questions on, on this slide here? So the navigation is important with the subs. Um, I, I do feel like we do everything to, to we train them better, we do everything and get them on the bus, and if the, you know, if the route's not right or the navigation's incorrect and it's slow, it just causes frustration. A lot of times, within a week or so, they want to I mean, quit. So we have to make sure we protect them with the, you know, with the right navigation that works. Um, and then we also have to make sure the routes are correct. You know, if they're filling in somebody, that route sheet or that route needs to be exactly right for this, this person that's going to go run the route. So it's um, so it helps. So this is some cost savings. I did a little bit. It's not exact, but I did a little bit of research um, with some counties around us. So 
I did talk to Sanovi as far as what it would cost if we didn't, you know, the renewal provides you know, a certain amount of discount. So um, we would be around 150 a year, and we're around 112, 120. I don't know the exact number. It's through contract review. I just don't remember the exact number. So we're we're in a substantial savings as, as far as that goes. Um, St. John's uses Zonar, which is a great company, um, a great vendor, uh, but they're about 160 or so, depending on what features they've added. And this is per year. And Alachua is using Gatekeeper, and Gatekeeper is good, but they're very expensive at 175. So how much more would, if we went with Sonova and stayed it and did the 150, and then had the navigation piece also, how much is the navigation piece? Like, what would the two combined equal? Do you mean like, it, what's did the 150 you, cover? It did covers. You, did you say the navigation was an additional expense, that it was a separate item? No, we're taking it off. In the renewal, they took it off of right. our, you know, our items that we have, that we're getting, and they added the, uh, yeah. the engine diagnostics, they swapped them. We actually got navigation for free from Sonovia back when I just started. We were repairing the relationship, you know, from something, and the, the, the uh, president or somebody came in and said, we're going to give you all these tablets and navigation. We thought it was great, but it, I mean, it was, it was terrible because the navigation didn't work properly because of the coverage, and people were frustrated, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. So if I could, if I could add one one thing, you know, one of the when Daryl and I were talking about this, one I wanted to put it on, put it out to the board a month ahead of time. It's in contract review. It'll be here in June because I, I recognize, while well, I wasn't in this position, I recognize that just three letters can create angst uh, from a couple of years back. But I would I would tell you, in having conversation with Daryl, just like anything else. People now have become accustomed to this. This is a normal process. Whereas before, it was a pretty big deal, if you all recall, those who were on the board. I think I was in my previous role, and I just remember you know, people coming to board meetings and all kinds of stuff relative to this topic. Now it's, a, it's an accepted practice. And one other thing that I would point out in, in Synovia, while I'm not advocating for one company or another, you know, um, the level or the amount of change at one time is an important consideration when doing this. In other words, a retraining of everybody involved in this particular program. Then if you compound that district-wide, one of the things that you had, a previous presentation that you had was on Synergy, which will be our new focus next year. And so when you're talking about uh, parents going to a, another, another account, for their child's report card, no longer would it be logging into focus. And then all of a sudden, it's no longer do I have um, the, uh, the school bus app. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, that's a lot of change. So one of the things that, that you try to do is monitor the amount of changes that are happening, because too much change at one time is generally not accepted by people. And so that was a consideration here as we had our discussion relative to this particular topic. Well, I think this company did correct a lot of the problems that were there that first year. Yep, I mean, we had many, yeah. many, many, many complaints. Yeah. And I know parents do love Here Comes the Bus app. Yeah. And it works really well with our routing software. And, I, and back to your question, I think you were asking what is it going to cost a, with if we add navigation with it. Right. And I apologize, I didn't answer the right way. But okay. Bus Planner um, is our routing software, and that's who we're looking at. So what they're doing is putting a mapping, and it's already, you know, they've already got it out. We're just looking to see how it actually works. Um, they've got a map out. It matches your route sheet. <clears throat> so it's not ever going to be wrong because your route sheets will mimic this mapping tool. What they're trying to do is add that icon on the, the tablets. They're together with Synovia trying to put that icon on those. Because I don't want two tablets. we got a tablet in there. I'm going to use that yeah. same icon. And I think they've got the solution where we just have to hit that icon and it pulls up the route. So, again, we're testing it and the cost associated with it. It's just like an all-a-car item because we already have the routing software, so it's it's minimal. I mean, it's something, but it's very minimal. It's a couple of thousand, I think, I've heard for the entire year to have the license, so it's very minimal. Just because you're mimic, you're just putting the route sheets are already there. It's just mimicking the map, over overlaying it. So, Daryl, I do have one more question. Um, when we hire, when we have new drivers, hire new drivers. I'm assuming there's training for using the system and everything yes. that they have because uh, I know one of the concerns a driver has is about, I guess, operating it and keeping their eyes on the road and all that type of thing. So I just, I, I mean, 
That's a good point. So what, and I'm, I'm glad you brought this up actually because back five years ago, we trained um, and we provided bonuses at certain times or, you know, and, and that was all good, but um, I, I suggested that we put a three-week training program together where yeah. we pay people a, a lower hourly rate, but I found that, you know, when you hire somebody or want somebody to come on board, um, they, you have to pay them. I mean, you have to pay them for their time. And it sure. takes a t it take it helps us train better. We're not rushing through it, and so we've got a, a very structured three week training for those folks to get their CDL. Now, all we're going to do is give them three weeks, but they're come Monday through Friday. They're going to get they're going to get their CDL, and we're paying them and helping them get it. And um, so, uh, you know, once they're on the bus, you know, they should you know, there's a whole day, and then we've got a little in the training room. There's a a tablet. They can play with it on their own time, and so what we've done at the end of their training, there's a list of items that, you know, do they know how to do a pay sheet, field trips, the Synovia uh, tablet. We have them walk through each one of them and check it off that they've completed it. If they can go do it at the end of that training, and they all can. And um, so it's, you know, as far as putting the information and what happens is they do it before they leave, but they're routed. What happens is they start covering another route for, for the families to see their bus on here comes the bus they have to stop what they're doing log off the one route and log into the new route and, and so the parents can see that route if they don't they're going like where's my kid you know I still see the bus sitting at the compound so it, they have to do that so that's probably what you're talking about we don't recommend while they're driving do that yes so um, um, you know I don't know if they do it but uh, but it's important that we do switch over because we feel like in our communication improvement, that's that's something the parents need to know. They eighty percent of the people have it. They need it. They're looking at it. They need. We need to make sure that that we switch over to that new route. Right. So. Do we still have a lot of double backs and things like that going on? Yes, ma'am. We do. So when in a situation like that, do the parents know that their child is in the second group coming out or the first yes. group coming <clears> out? Yes, we do. I mean, that's numerous robocalls. I okay. Mean, and the schools support us, and a lot. Because it would of, I mean, still be the same them. route, but yeah. Yeah, and so uh, if it's any kind of delay, I mean, we're we're trying to communicate as much as possible, and a lot of times when we even get calls, we'll say we're going to be about 20 minutes late, and we're 30 minutes late, and they'll call and say, why didn't you know that it was going to be 10 minutes more? So we still get those calls, but uh, you know, it's an estimate because again, you got traffic and accident, and everything, and we're so close together, a lot of things can happen. But we communicate like that every day and trying to make sure and, and just with the COVID and with people out I mean it's it's a constant battle but um, we've had over the last two weeks every day about 28 to 35 people out a day and so um, and it's not people just hanging out at the beach they're they're, they're you know they're either sick or you know they they're on confidential leave there's something mm -hmm. so it's kind of we're just fighting through it so <coughs> I would just say that nobody is more receptive and um, and helping of parents than oh. Daryl Sweat. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. We've all got emails. No, I'll be honest with you. I have some practice before I call them. I have to practice a few times because <laughs> <laughs> I know it's going to be practice. Yeah. Daryl does a, he does a great job. Of he, does, he really five, does, and I appreciate it. Thank, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, I know he's thank you very and, much. and it's not cookie cutter. He's you know he's mm -hmm. individual parents. Uh, that needs some special attention. He's he yeah, yeah. really works hard, and I'm really I'm very grateful. Also, I wanted to give a shout out to uh, Marion. I'm going to say this name wrong. Hasselipus. She's, yeah, she's a dispatcher. Somebody yeah. told me that she does a great job, and they wanted to make sure that I brought it up. So I'm bringing it up, and and uh, I guess she's star. been there for I mean, a long time. She's and long, so she, she's retiring in June. Okay, Ooh, that's I guess one of the call. reasons they wanted to I make got sure. Open dispatcher position. Yeah. <laughs> She's awesome. I mean, that that's what I was told. So I just wanted to say thank you. Just to get in and put that puzzle together, as people call in or things happen, you, you got to be. And she's really good at it. So yeah. I will pass that on. So. Yeah. So please, please tell her that several people called me to say, please make sure. Okay. She'll be glad that. to hear that. I will. Yeah. Any more questions? I think my the next. I don't think I had. I had one more slide, but it was just a picture of just how what we look at. It's kind of jumbled up together, but. That's, for example, if they're at the compound, they're all, but if they spread out and start moving, we see actually the bus number. So, um, but that's it. I think uh, I 
was just kind of a in short. Thank you. If you so have is any that questions. your recommendation to stay with Synovia? Is that yes, it is. And, and I'll be honest with you, it wasn't that way a couple of years ago. I was thinking, but they have, you know, a CalAMP which is uh, a company they, they're in with now, and they, their service is much better. We have a weekly call with a customer service or customer rep that's assigned to us. Um, so we, we get a lot better service. That they're, they're really in tune with what we're doing, and so the reporting tool's a lot better. Their product's a lot better. And so we, we've seen the improvements. The back office part and working with our routing software has always been awesome. But perception to me is everything. So the employees who are actually using the tablets and using the software, I mean, if it doesn't work and they're saying it doesn't work, then it doesn't work. No matter if they didn't sync it right or they didn't, it, that's just the way it is. It's not, something needs to change. So, and then they've done, over the last two years, done a lot better. And we're in a great shape with them right now. I'm really glad to hear that because mm -hmm. we did yeah. have so many concerns and um, it didn't seem like in the beginning that they were really working with us. So it's, they weren't, yeah, it's and that was part of the reason why we got navigation, which even made it worse, you know, yeah, right. so. But well, it was, you. you know, I was thinking, wow, we're going to have navigation, but half the time it didn't work, so. But so they did they come really in and try to repair well, it. Will this be another five-year contract? Is that what it is? Yes, that's, that's what they proposed. And, and, you know, the, it's through contract review, so there's some language right. that we talked about with them that, you know, that, and so we expect it to be the 150000 per year for five years? No, you can, that's if we didn't do the renewal, it would okay. go up to one fifty. We're around, I uh, have to look at it, exactly, we're on run 12. Okay. You know, we're we're almost exactly the same and that we paid the, the last same. five years, Very which is good. pretty unheard of. Um, so you'd be able to get that pricing. In. So can we go for a cut now, too? It's worth asking, Ms. Clark. I mean, they're working, I mean, believe me, Birdie and her team, they're, you know, they're working with them pretty hard as far as, uh, but they, they pretty, you know, made everything very attractive for us um, to keep our business. But honestly, if they were what I thought of them two years ago and we were having daily problems, I mean, it wouldn't matter to me because it's all about, it's got to work, it's got to be productive yeah. for us. And um, so they've come a long way. Well, let me <clears throat> interject. Um, I have a little family experience with the bus transportation. Mm -hmm. um, had to listen to it every dinner time. Is he interested in driving? <laughs> just, wait, we can yeah. talk Is he interested in driving? We can talk about that. Never mind. Now you need a dispatcher. Um, <laughs> yeah, we need a dispatcher. Yeah. But you know, we we know that we continue to lose bus drivers, and it's not always about. Driving. And I think. We've got so many bus drivers on different levels of education with the system <clears throat> and everything else. And obviously, many of them are running two and three routes mm -hmm. right now. And it scares me to think that we've got all this growth coming and we can't even handle what we've got today. So whatever we do, we've got to make sure it's not just pay, but they feel comfortable, they love what they're working with, they're not the low person on the totem pole, and that um, they enjoy what they do. Yeah, I agree with you. And, and it's, enjoying uh, what you do is pretty much when <clears throat> a student who's graduated comes back and says, and sees the bus driver and says, "Hey, Mr. Clark or whoever, um, I'm doing this now," and you're going, "Wow!" You know that they would even talk to you and share what they're doing with school. And Program education. Yeah, 100% so. agree. And again, it's perception not only to the families and the drivers, but um, I feel like the way our office staff works is perception on how we treat each one of them. Every one of them deserves the same value, and I'm constantly coaching on that as far as, you know, don't fit. If somebody, you put some, uh, some kind of route change in somebody's mailbox without explaining it logically that it was done logically, that the decision was made that way, they may think, well, they're just picking on me. Why are they taking yeah. students or adding students? Just so many things can go from there as far as perception goes when just a little communication or a meeting and stuff. So we're changing a lot of that, but it's, um, it's a work in progress. It's a lot of people and a lot of, but it's, it, we got to do it. It's just yeah. the way it is. So. I mean, we can't do like uh, waste management and double the pay. Which yeah. is what they're having. We've done very good as far as the pay goes. I think we're, I'll challenge any district as far as transportation goes for what we, where we're at now. Compared, I mean, we're, we're in great shape as far as, we've done everything. Now we just need to treat everybody with value and just exactly. keep, keep culture and yep. hire more people. That's so. yeah. And that lifeline to the back to the office when I need help. They can't have that person on the phone 
that person is going to be available. Well, and, and, and something we're going to also do going into next year. Right now, it's kind of um, the I mean, everybody's just coming in and out, but we're going to schedule. Um, have a calendar specifically for meetings with their router because they're assigned to a router and it's going to be on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursdays between certain time frames like say 9 to 12 or 9 to 1 and um, they're going to have to put, you know, instead of just walking in they're going to be scheduled. Monday and Fridays are bad so we're going to stay away from those days going forward and we're going to have some structure on how so the router's prepared and it's a real meeting instead of just walking in when they're doing stuff and you know it's going to be a lot more you know, organized, I guess. So. Right. When you consider the bus driver as that first person oh, right. that those children see, and and each, I mean, for the bus drivers that I've ridden with or just met, they take it so personally, and they take those children are theirs, <clears throat> and I love that. That's, I mean, well, the I kids feel welcome. Well, sometimes the bus is the one place where they right, really they feel welcome. Working yeah. so hard out there right now in the field, and they they're as worn out as anybody, but they. They stick with it. It's mm -hmm. about the kids, but I mean, they're, they're, you know, I'm trying to, I'm out there patting them on the, I'm doing everything I can too, because we're all just totally swamped, you know, trying to do it, but we're all together, and it's, but they're out there in the trenches doing it, and covering this route, and covering that route, and it's, uh, it's a blessing to have them, but it's, you know, they're getting, they're getting burnt out, so we yeah. need to help them some too, yeah. Well, Mr. Sweat, Compliments to you because that's the best thing that's happened to yeah. the transportation department which you're coming here. Well, thank you. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Yeah, but that is a big yes. yeah. well, thank you very much. If y'all have any questions or anything, just please feel free to call me or email. So, thank you. Great. All right. Thank, thank you. Anything further, Mr. Boski? Uh, no, I just appreciate the conversation. Do we expect Sonovia on the, is it June, the June? June. June. Mm -hmm. I, the thought process to, to bring it forward now was um, well, knowing that it created some consternation in the past. Mm -hmm. This gives us plenty of time to uh, either meet with, with Mr. Sweat individually, call him up, get all your questions answered prior, prior to that meeting. I feel confident in the decision for a bunch of reasons. I had my own little, you know, reason related to change uh, than something else that's concerning to me about it. So, that is it. Thank you, Mr. Ross. Mr. Bickner, any comments? Oh, other than if you want to know how important the school buses are, watch for us go. First thing you lose, <laughs> thing There you go. There you go. I didn't hear what he said. He said, watch for us to Oh. Mm -hmm. Ms. Bullock? Uh, I'd like to thank Price and her department. Uh, we uh, walked the campus the other day, and uh, she got her steps in. I, I had to have CPR, but, <laughs> but uh, uh, it, you know, I, I really appreciate that. And then the opportunity to come down to the district office and talk with the architects again. So I really appreciate being included in that. And so uh, I just want to say thank you very much. Do we have any clues to when that report might be done? Uh, end of May. End of May. Okay. Great. Ms. Um, I have an email from a constituent. I think we all got it, but she wanted us to consider as a board making a statement about the Bright Future Scholarship and what's happening in the state legislature with the funding for that. Um, so I wasn't sure. If I, I told her I would bring it forward at the board meeting because that would be something that the whole board needs to talk yeah, about. Yeah, I think the, the, the session should end by Friday unless it's a yeah. Yeah. extended. Okay. So, so I don't know if we would be there for it. Of course, the, the issue was having to choose certain majors, certain majors not receiving you know, right to us for right to funding. That was, that was taken off that agenda, though. And of course, that you know, there's, there are several bits of legislation that are um, that will impact our work you know, mm -hmm. in, in, all, in all kinds of ways. Um, yeah that uh, we'll see here by Friday. Mm -hmm. And of course, the budget would be nice too, to know what our budget is. Which gives me a segue, I'm going to pass out to you, the <laughs> trim. Full of the trim. Today. I full of I just, it just occurred to me, I said, this is a perfect time. I'm going to pass out the piece of paper. It has the timeline for our, our next budget for next year. I saw that meeting coming up in July, and I thought, there goes our vacation. <laughs> That's why I'm giving it to you early. <laughs> Plan 
while he's doing that, Ms. Clark, oh, Ms. Dillhausen, did you have anything more? Thank you. Thank you. And Ms. Clark? Well, I had great fun this Saturday morning with the math challenge. Oh, yeah, good. Math field. I was so sorry I missed that. One of my favorite days of the year. It was fun. And the fun part, of course, was knowing that they were competing school to school, you know, even in the early morning, watching them group outside and run in. I mean, they were excited and to think they took a Saturday morning. And even more so that our staff volunteered to coach them to even participate mm -hmm. in, in the volunteers. So, um, being the representative for the school board to the Clay County Commission, uh, one thing that bothers me, and I talked to Mike Sell about it last night when I saw him, that we don't know far enough in advance, Mr. Foster, you probably do, but probably not either, <laughs> what, you know, what is really impacting our community and growth. So Mike was surprised that they really don't have anything. So he's creating a spreadsheet that shows who's coming, dates, when, uh, because in fact I was listening to a friend of mine, T.R. Kaline, at the Duval uh, School Board or City Council meeting, the concurrency issues, you know, because we don't know in a group how many are going to the public schools, how many are going to charter, you know, we just, we can look at a, a DR Horton community and we can guess, but, you know, if it's a custom home builder or these empty nesters, you know, what do we really, really know and how well can we plan? But anyway, Mike is going to create something so we don't just happen to see the ground being broken in a big community even before it's discussed at the commission meeting, we have some idea of what's coming That's down the pike. That's nice. That would be very helpful. Don't they? Wish we'd had something like that. Mr. Pasa, do they we, ever have anything like that? We do. Um, <laughs> absolutely. So I uh, get a map from the county and it shows every list, every development that's right. coming in. And uh, they have to go before the DRC. Um, before, but then again, the developers sit on stuff and they don't necessarily, it's not their public, that's their business and that's what they try to do is, is to get ahead and see who's, you know, what areas are hot or what areas are not. So if we've got an inside track with maybe a, a Ryan Holt or with maybe D.R. Horton, who knows what's going on in their war you know, in their war room. So we, um, sometimes we're privy to it, sometimes we're not. I know T.R. Hainline very well. Um, he and my sister work together in Broward County, so uh, TR is good with uh, Roger Towers, and he tries to get, get to me and let me know what's coming. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes he's saying, oh, that's not going to happen. Next thing you know, boom, there it is. Mm -hmm. So there is a map, yeah. and we actually had given it to Mr. Broski, yeah. that lists all of the incoming developments. So why not? Um, but uh, for the most part, I think we have a, I, I would say we got a 90% solution on what we know is coming in. And I think we see that like once a year when we do that facilities, five-year facilities plan, of the growth of what's coming. And, and basically you don't know until they have the planning and zoning board approved yes. things. Right. Yes, ma'am. That, that's where we need more there's help. One, uh, there's there's need more people on that board there's, that are school board. Right. And there's a group ahead of that. It's, okay. it's the development mm -hmm. review committee. They okay. see it before it goes to the planning commission. So we always know what's going to so be. So you have an indication. And then sometimes, sometimes things go, I'm sorry, I'm talking so much. Sometimes things go before the DRC and then you just never come to fruition. I've seen that happen as well. Well, keep us posted. Thank you. Anything else, Ms. Clark? Ms. Kerkis? No, nope, I don't have anything. Thank you. I just have one thing. That's happy anniversary, Ms. Kidwell. Oh. It looks like you had a marvelous time and 40 years. Very nice. Very nice. Wow. On that note, we are <laughs>